I welcome the Sphere Deha, which is on the 12th of December. We're on Thursday. We're just going to be looking at a pair today. We think offers a really great risk reward buying opportunity. It's USD SEK. It's a nice volatile pair, and we're going to the charts in a moment. Now, one thing we really like doing here is uh, buying bearish extremes or selling bullish extremes. Now, in terms of this being a bearish extreme, we see no more good news coming for the Swedish krona, no more bad news coming for the USD. So the risk is relatively low against the reward potential, which is really good. Now, if I was to take a major economy in Europe that I think is in really worrying shape, it's Sweden. They're just about to end negative rates, though, but that's in the price. Um, this looks for us a really good risk reward trading opportunity, as I've just said. We're going to do a reasonable bet on it. Um, let's go and take a look at the fundamentals behind the chart and the key technical levels. But just before we do so, please do keep in mind, it is my view as of right now. It can, of course, change in line with the market conditions and action. If you want all our trading techniques, our daily technical sentiment analysis of 14, for experience, you can get live access to our member centre on the link beneath this video. Right, let's go and take a look at the chart. Right, uh, USD SEK daily chart. I'll just do my technicals in a moment, but uh, big fall in the dollar, about 6%. That candle there alone, just 1%. But that really is the overshoot for us. I'll come and do the technicals in a moment. Now, um, Sweden is going to end negative rates. Uh, presently 0.25% negative, and they've hinted they want to do this. The inflation data yesterday cements the trader view that they will do it. It's discounted. So the Riksbank Bank are going to raise rates next week um, in the market size, discounted in the price if they do. Uh, my own view is it will have little impact on the USD in terms of sending it lower at all. In fact, I think the USD is just going to go all the way back up to chart highs. Now, you end negative rates. So it's not going to really help Sweden. Um, you know, look at the these points I've listed out here. These are just some of the few, or sorry, sorry, some of the problems that Sweden has. Manufacturing the weakest since 2012. GDP slowing just 0.3% last quarter. Unemployment has been moving up, ticking up for the last 18 months. Swedish um, worker productivity is really weak. It's a major problem for Sweden. They've got a housing bubble that was flagged by the ECB recently. Household debt, 180%. That's one of the highest in Europe. And they're ending negative rates. Is that going to help the economy? It's kind of a strange move. I think it's like the Riksbank. Bank. I'd like the ECB saying, well, you know, we haven't really got any more ammunition left. There's no point in keeping on with negative rates. So they're going to end them. OK, but what are they going to do next? They're completely stuck, aren't they? Um, yeah, you've got to keep in mind, uh, I haven't done the monthly chart in this video, but yeah, the, the SEK has been under pressure for a, a good few years. This is a really decent correction. I think maybe too many people uh, were along with the USD, short of the second. You've just seen... Uh, just a natural correction. Everything favours the USD. It holds the yield advantage, obviously. It's got a better economy. It's also a safe haven if we get risk off. Um, yeah, 6% move down and overshoot, really, of the buy, in our view. And, yeah, could have thrown in, in my list of points that uh, Eurozone is slowing up. That obviously impacts on Sweden. Uh, and, you yeah, know, Global economic growth is slowing up. Yeah, it, it's not looking good for Sweden at all. So I think, you know, this candle here, the CPI data, that's the um, discounting the rate hike next week. And I quite like it the way we tumble down. Volatility in this pair is always high, but you tumble down, then you go straight outside the outer Bollinger Band. We like big candles outside of the outer Bollinger Band because they normally don't last for long. We're coming back in, um, and yeah, basically we have gone long at 9.41.30, uh, which have come a little bit off the highs, but I'm not too concerned. What I quite like is that you get a new low 
and then you blow. Um, behind here would be the first level of sport, but this is the real level of sport, and it can be seen on the monthly chart. It's not so clear on the daily. So really that double bottom there. That for us is really, sorry, I keep skewing my line. That for us is really firm support. I'm giving it a bit of room, actually, <laughs> uh, to my stop, just in case you get another poke on the tail or a tail through or whatever. I just don't see us closing below this level. Of course we could. There we are, we just poked above our level, coming through the 940 kit and the 941.50 level. Where are we going to go to? Um, I personally think if we get above this red here, which I think we'll do, we'll start to accelerate to the upside and we will go back up to chart highs. Um, you know, for us, this is a great buy and I, I, I really like it. It's got a really good risk reward. Obviously, if we get to our target, I just don't see any more good news coming for the SEK. It's all going to be in favour of the US state. Um, of course, I could be wrong, but uh, I'm doing a reasonable size bet on this one. I've just got to manage the trade as it goes, but uh, I just really, really, really like the look of it. Um, so yeah, see how it goes. <laughs> but that is the video for today. Thank you very much for watching me as usual. Take care. Have a good day.